Hello everyone, this is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to part number two of chapter 10, creating user interfaces. Um, I'm gonna go into a little bit about auto rotation tonight and auto sizing uh, and considerations in your application. Um, because it's very cool for your devices, to, uh, your applications on your iPhones and your iPads to support multiple orientations but there's extra work with it that goes along with it and, and some things that you can consider up front that will make your job a lot easier. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of um, apps that I covered for my course tonight um, that we had earlier, just a second. Oh yeah, just uh, two seconds, let me bring this over. And uh, again, um, if you'd like to attend live, you can just go to the video, free videos, and you can either view the previous recordings, which are here and on my YouTube channel, and then also click here and you can attend live on the Go to Webinar sessions. And then, of course, if you'd like to take my full um, twice a week, one hour courses on different topics, just go here and you can do that as well. All right, so the first application we're going to talk about is going to be our auto size application. And it is probably one of the easiest um, and one of the most common ways of uh, handling auto rotation. And there we go. And I'll go ahead and run it here. Oops, just a second here. Wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Sorry. There we go, I think I got it here. And let me delete that. And I'm sized. Well, I don't, I've got another one here, but this will work. Um, here we have our buttons that um, are in the landscape position. And when I rotate them, they'll go to the portrait position. All right, so. Um, you'll see it'd be a two by three and then going to a three by three. Well, how you want to do that is be able to handle on the application, uh, on the rotation for that view under the will animate rotation to interface orientation is the method that gets called as the device is being rotated. All right, but the one thing you also want to do is list on your should auto rotate to interface rotation which views you're going to handle on that rotation. So on your at your device and application level, you can specify in your summary um, which orientation the application would support. Here we support portrait, landscape left, landscape right. And then on each view, you can say how you're going to handle that orientation. Well, the nice thing about doing this with will animate rotation to interface is that method will allow you to precisely put in your, uh, where you want those controls to show up in your view. All right, so here we're handling, if it's in the portrait orientation, we're gonna put our buttons at that location. And then if we're in the um, uh, landscape position, then we're gonna handle it that way. Right, the other most common way of, of handling, probably the easiest that I like to use, is to use two different views in your nib. I like to have, that way, I don't have to worry about, you know, how many points each, um, each button's gonna be, you know, 20, 20 points over and 20 points down and 100 pixels uh, long and 50 pixels wide. I don't have to do that. I can kind of all do it here and specify on my rotation how I want that view displayed. Okay, and so that makes it really nice. So view did load, view did unload. I'm I'm setting my my uh, my views up, and um, there's a degrees to radians here. There's a very common 
defined preprocessor definition that will specify the um, a core graphics um, a fine transform uh, make rotation so that we can go ahead and go if it's going to be portrait landscape left landscape right or if we're going to support upside down normally with the iPhone you normally don't want to support upside down because when a call comes in it's in the wrong orientation now advantages and disadvantages Apple wants you on your iPad to support all orientations as they say in your application there's no right way to hold the iPad however it does make sense on some application that it only supports one orientation like a, a game your game may may be designed to only work in landscape but you got to be careful because if Apple thinks that hey other apps that are similar to yours support both you should support both you can get your application rejected there's also a lot more testing that goes into when you are support multiple orientations a lot more code and a lot more testing and um, on the iPhone by default you need to support you know one orientation which of course is um, you know with the home button at the bottom and then if you're going to support other locations you know typically Apple's pretty flexible on the iPhone submitting apps to the iPhone if you only want to support one orientation I always say at least get one orientation out the door for your iPhone app and then do other orientations later on because it does add more work and more complexity more heartache and you want to I always tell my students get your apps on the App Store and get some feeling of progress and then um, then later on support multiple orientations all right well I appreciate you joining me tonight those of you that are attending live I'll stay ahead I'll stay um, um, live here and stop the recording for those watching on YouTube and those that are attending live can ask questions on any chapter of the book and I look forward to seeing everybody next Wednesday at this time 630 Pacific thanks for attending everybody good night